Hey everyone, so in this video I want to talk a bit about rational exponent laws, specifically the two that we covered in class today, so this will be just sort of a summary video of that, including some examples. So let's take a look at the first one. So in class we talked about how to deal with something like this, b to the power of 1 over n. So we talked about how there's a relationship between this kind of exponent uh, and a radical, so specifically how you can transfer between this and a radical. So if we have a power of 1 over n, what we can do is we can take that n, and we can take the nth root of b. So b to the power of 1 over n is the same thing as the nth root of b. Okay. So let's see some specific examples of using this. So first example, let's say we have 216 to the power of 1, 1 over 3. So according to the first rational exponent law, we can actually take that 3 on the bottom of the fractional exponent and turn it into a third root. So we're taking the third root of 216. Okay. Well, the third root of 216 is just 6. So that's just a really, really basic example. Let's, let's take a look at how you might be able to use this in a little bit more complex example. So let's suppose I wanted to take the fourth root of 81 over 16. Okay. So um, there is a property of, of taking uh, roots where you can take, uh, if you have taking the root of a fraction, you could take the, the fourth root of the top and the bottom. But let's just show that you can do that using this example. Okay. So, if I'm taking the fourth root of 81 over 16, I know that the fourth root, according to the exponent law that we just talked about, is going to be the same thing as putting it to the power of 1 over 4. So I can rewrite this as 81 over 16 to the power of 1 over 4. Now, both the 81 and the 16 are being put to the power of 1 over 4, so that power of 1 over 4 is going to affect them both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this, so I have 81 to the power of 1 over 4 over 16 to the power of 1 over 4. Okay, so again, I'm going to kind of work backwards the other way. Now that we have each of them meeting the power of 1 over 4, I'm going to take, we'll go backwards and take the fourth root of each of them. So I have the fourth root of 81 over the fourth root of 16, and I can actually easily take the fourth root of each of those. Fourth root of 81 is 3, fourth root of 16 is 2, so my answer is going to be 3 over 2. So that's our first rational exponent law. Let's take a look at our second one. So our second rational exponent law is a little bit more useful because we are not only going to have uh, b to the power of 1 over n, but what happens if we have a numerator that is not 1, right? This is, this is where we have a numerator that's not 1. So let's see what we do here. So um, the n is still going to be involved somehow with taking a root, but we need to know how to deal with this, this m that we have, our denominator here. So we can evaluate this like the following, right? So we could take the nth root of b to the power of m, but there's another way, okay? There's another way to do this, and the other way would be to take the nth root of b and then put that to the power of m. Both of these are correct, and they're actually going to give you the exact same answer, but there are going to be some circumstances in which it's easier to use one or the other, okay? So let's take a look at one example. So if I have 256 to the power of 3 eighths, okay? So uh, according to the first way, uh, the, well, the, the first example, this guy here, right? Let's rewrite it in that form. So we would get the eighth root of 256 to the power of 3. And the second way of writing it would be the eighth root of 256 well, to the power of 3 on the outside. Okay, so the question is, which, way, which one of these is easier to actually deal with? And you're going to find that the second one here is a little bit easier to deal with because we can take the, the eighth root of 256, okay, uh, and that's actually relatively easy. But over here, we would have to take the eighth root of whatever 256 to the power of 3 is. That's going to be a very large number. So we want to use this guy here, the guy on the right. So let's deal with that. So if we take the 8th root of 256 and then put that to the power of 3, that'll give us 2 to the power of 3, because the 8th root of 256 is 2, okay? And 2 to the power of 3 is pretty easy to evaluate, that's just 8, okay? So again, that's a simple example. Let's look at a more complicated example. Okay, so let's say I have 27 to the power of 1 sixth times 27 to the power of 1 over 2. So you might look at that and say to yourself, well, hold on a second, right? Both of those are the power of 1 over 6 and 1 over 2, right? So that looks more like that first rational exponent law that we dealt with. And yes, you could technically evaluate both of those individually using, using roots or using radicals, but the problem is that you'd get a decimal answer for the sixth root of 27 and the, the, uh, the square root of 27. Both of those are going to give you decimals. And that would mean that you'd have to approximate somewhere, 
And that means you're not going to get an exact value. So we're actually going to be, be making use of the second exponent law somewhere, and I'm going to show you how to do that. What I want you to notice is that we have both these exponent terms that are being multiplied, and they have the same base. Okay, So we can actually use our exponent laws here. We know that we have two exponent terms with the same base that are being multiplied that we can add the exponent. So that's going to be our first step. So we're going to have 27 to the power of 1 sixth plus a half, right? So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2 is what we get as our exponent. So let's actually add these. And since they're both fractions, we need a common denominator. So let's, let's create a common denominator. So that's going to give us 27 to the power of 1 sixth plus 3 sixths. Right, because our common denominator is 6, so i got to multiply 1 over 2 by 3 over 3, and that gives me 3 over 6. Okay, So now that I have my common denominator, I can actually add these, and that's going to give us 27 to the power of 4 over 6. Notice that 4 over 6 is reducible, so we can reduce that fraction to 27 to the power of 2 over 3. And now I can make use of the exponent law we just talked about. right? So I can rewrite this in terms of the third root of 27 all to the power of 2. Now, the third root of 27 is just 3, so we're going to get 3 squared, and our final answer is 9. So, if we just evaluated these two guys individually and multiplied them, again, we would have to approximate the answers for each of those, and that would mean that when we multiply them get together, we'd get something that's you know close to 9, but not exactly 9. But if we know how to use our exponent laws, and we know how to, uh, how to deal with rational exponents that have a fraction in the form of m over n, we can actually take this and get an exact answer. So this has just been a, a summary, uh, including a couple examples of how to use the rational exponent laws. Hope it's helpful for you guys. Take care.